it kind of tells it um, what to change or what, what to do continuously. You, you set a frame rate of 30, we're telling it to call the, the draw function um, 30 times a minute, um, 30 times a second, excuse me. And then if you move your mouse around on the screen, um, it will figure out where, the, you know, where it is, and it will input the parameters into your mouse X and mouse Y, and uh, you have many ellipses being drawn on the screen. You can also use the mouse as input control. So we can use it to resize the arrays, the, um, the ellipses, and also move them around each other. You can't really do that with, the, with this here, but I'll show you guys afterwards um, on the blog how you can uh, so you move the two circles around and um, they can get bigger and smaller. You can get a fake uh, perception. Uh, we're going to add a, a little arc on the bottom right hand corner. That's this little arc function. And if you get into processing, you're going to go back to your high school geometry class because a lot of the stuff is you know, sine and cosine, and you got to figure out your, your radius and your angles and radians. Um, but it's, you know, it's fun to get back into that. And if you do a little bit more work, you get this little join, which um, you, know, you have your four loops. And we're creating eight slices going around, and then we're filling it with an ellipse. Um, and if you, you know, take the simple concept, and you keep going with a lot more of the language that's available. Um, you know, have a good reference. You're going to go through and, and figure out what the functions are. But if you keep going, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. I'm just going to switch on my screen. Um, here we took what's <laughs> um, called basically a donut. I don't know what you know what it is to call it. It's a donut-shaped object where you have. Uh, donut segments, which is like, for example, the green is one donut segment, and then the yellow would be another. And then the individual um, boxes inside of that are your donut slices, which actually hold your data. So in this case, I'm using this as, here's a person node. I'm looking at the ruby segment. Uh, I can see that there's 38 of these uh, slices. So this person has been vouched uh, 38 times, or by, by 38 different people. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the outside are the names of the people who have vouched for this person. And if I were to mouse over the yellow, it would you know, remove all that and switch to you know, whatever the yellow is, Java, for example. Um, but you know, having a donut by itself is not enough, right? That's, that's not fun. I want to be able to click on one of the donut slices and then take me to that person so I can see their, uh, you know, their representation of what they're doing. So if you were to mouse over on one of these items, <coughs> you get the next person loaded on this. You get their name, their information, kind of the same way. And you build your graph. You're kind of traversing your graph one node at a time. So if you have a use case where you know you don't want to see the whole graph because it's just too much data, you, want, you have a nice clean single starting point. Um, this is a great realization that you can have. And, uh, but there's a little bit more. Sometimes you want to include more than just what's on there. You want to have um, like a movie poster or some description. This is an example called Neoflix, which is on GitHub as well, where we take uh, movie data from um, sources like IMDb and the ratings to figure out a recommendation for another movie that you might like. If you like uh, A Bug's Life, maybe like Toy Story, that kind of thing. But it also calls out to, um, to get movie posters and get the genre of, of the movie and a general description of the movie. It adds it to um, to a side panel, which each node returns. So you can kind of use that to build on top of this. And you can also include a search on top as well to use the center, you know, a jQuery out of complete to find a movie and reload the page starting from that uh, point. Um, so some of the guts of this thing. What, what is it really? It's, it's just a JSON object, right? So if you can, if you can write this JSON object in, in whatever you can get it at, um, you have a details that HTML, which is the information on the side panel that I showed you, and that can be you know, whatever you want it to be. And then you have your data. The data starts off with just the node that you're looking at, right? So the ID, the name, and then we have some attributes of that node. Now, I chose to use relationships, but you don't have to. Your attributes can be properties of that node, or can be actions that you want to do. Uh, in this case, we're talking about relationships. So it's an array of uh, relationship types. These are donut segments. Uh, we just have ID and name, and the values is where, where our donut slice is going to. So the ID of our first neighbor and the name, you know, the ID of the second neighbor and the name, and so on. 
and you can just you know keep going uh, forever on this. So use cases for this. Um, if you have about a dozen or two segments, this is going to look nice for you. If you have hundreds of segments, this is going to be a giant mess. Don't use it for that. Um, if you have about 50 donut slices, also looks great. If you have anything like a super node, we have a million connections, forget it. You're going to kill your browser. Um, and it's good for node to node traversals. You, know, you, you have one point and you want to just keep going and see where it leads. Um, so don't use it for a whole graph navigation. Um, so how it's built, we have a resource class, which uh, does the AJAX call to get our data, which I, you saw earlier contains attributes and values. These are um, the donut segments we fill, and then we fill the donut slices, put them all together into a donut, which also has our loading animation, and I'll show you that hopefully. And then it calls donut.draw to get it on the screen. So donut has an array of donut segments. You know, it lets you it figures out which slice is being selected, so you have to write kind of like your own maps over. And uh, it calls segment.draw. The, the segments have an array of donut slices. They figure out how much space they should take up, depending on uh, the different segments you have. And it calls um, slice draw many times, one for each slice that you have. It also has tweens, which is the idea of uh, motion, but done in a nice, clean way, so you don't, you don't have jerky motion. There's a tween library built in. Uh, and then the slice at the end draws itself and checks to see if it's selected and it also responds to when you click on it. Uh, behind the scenes there's actual graph class that, you know, as you, you build up an array of nodes and you build up an array of edges, so it knows the graph exists and it, figures, it knows what, what's incoming and what's outgoing. Uh, but the node class delegates everything to resource, which is really, you know, the donut. Uh, the edge class uh, knows about the to and from nodes, but it also has path and it uh, knows about it so you can uh, draw it and build it on it. Uh, things you can tweak, obviously if you want to reuse this, you're more you than welcome to. Uh, the original project was done by Michael Alfreder and it's an MIT license, so pretty much whatever you want. Uh, you can tweak the color palette, uh, you know, you can specify uh, different colors for different types. You can add multiple paths, I'm going to show you one with just single paths. You can add properties and actions. And it's just JavaScript, so you know, feel free to do it. All right. Uh, if you check my blog, I have another visualization done with D3.js. This one's more of a whole graph visualization where you have uh, people who know each other. And let me just switch to. So here's the visualization in real life. So here's our done segment. When you highlight, it has the names. And when you switch to a different segment, it moves everything out of the way so you can clearly see it. Uh, in this visualization is, you know, multiple. You can also um, have some where it's just one type. Doesn't, you don't have to, uh, to have multiple segments. Um, and everything is on GitHub and available at uh, Max Marzin. And if you want to know more about the, some of the work I'm doing, uh, which is just playing around with the Neo4j, the REST API, uh, some gremlin stuff, it's all on uh, maximarchy.com. Thank you. So you have very fast question. Processing, the earth, uh, so the, the Java-like processing also has an uh, XML parser. Is this also included in processing JS? I'm sorry, it has a... The XML parser. XML entity... Uh, I haven't played with it because... I'm um, usually going to have to use JSON, and that's kind of what I'm returning. Okay. I think most of the, like the rest API, the Neo4j uses this, is also JSON based, so I kind of go with that. But anyway, you can, you know, you can always take the XML, parse it yourself. Yeah, okay. Okay, so thank you.